Hi, and welcome. I'm Matthew, the College Railroader. Since a young age, I've always enjoyed the hobby of model trains. And with that great hobby and passion, I've been able to build this fantastic train room, as well as create the College Railroader. Now, in these videos, I'll be demonstrating some top tips and tricks to new beginner model railroaders, whether you're going into college or you want to get into this great hobby. Now, these tips and tricks will not be your average kind. Rather, they're more of a broad concept that most new model railroaders should get to know. And with that being said, all aboard! Recently, I've been painting on this wall over here a nice sky blue and some bright white for nice clouds, just to add that more nature and uh, realistic part of a layout. Kind of brings the kind of ties the layout in all together, really makes it pop. Um, but for today's episode, I really wanted to talk about working in confined spaces. Um, whether or not you are a college student like myself who only has a small amount of space to work with, I be just a small three foot by six foot table or you're looking into getting in the hobby and you want to kind of start up small, you know, baby steps. It's not easy to jump right into uh, this hobby and make a giant, you know, 11 feet by 16 foot layout like this great train room. And so I wanted to kind of talk about uh, one of the main tips about getting into this hobby. And one of those top tips is knowing your scale and their respective radius. Now, there are many different types of scales within model railroading. Um, and so the three most common scales are O scale, HO scale, which is half of O scale, and N scale, which is also half of HO scale, meaning it is four times bigger than O scale. And just with those three scales alone, um, you could already see drastically how much space it takes up for these bigger scales. Um, and so what I'll show you right now is we're gonna look at just a simple semicircle. If you want to just to make a little oval loop, you know, you're gonna need that big curve for that oval, that semicircle, right? And so I wanna show you just with those three different sizes, I wanna kinda of show you uh, how different they are. And with that being said, let's look. All right, so as you guys can see right here, we have N scale right on the inner, HO scale in the middle, and O scale on the side. And so just looking right on here, you can already see how big it takes um, on this table. And this table is already five feet long. So I'm going to show you this HO track right now. Uh, this is a 18 inch radius track. And the reason how you know that is by... You measure from rail to rail, from the outer rails, and that's kind of how you show how long the radius is. However, to get a better idea of what that means, you want to make a semicircle. Think of it like geometry, right? Where you want a half circle, then you need the diameter, and the diameter is twice the radius. So when I say I have a 18 inch radius curve, that means it will take me 36 inches which is also three feet, to make a complete semicircle loop. And so, like I said before, is when you're measuring um, tracks, you do rail to rail. But with those tracks, because they already have the ballast kind of on it, which is that gray bit, you will then measure from the ballast. So like I said before, that 18-inch radius, which will give you three feet in diameter, it's good to add at least three inches uh, just to include the ballast on the sides. As you guys saw in that little demonstration, you can definitely see now how just those three out of the numerous different scales all interact with each other and how sometimes both scales in terms of size tends to overlap. Like we saw with the O scale and the HO, how they both had an 18 inch radius track and was able to make that 36 inch semicircle. And so with that, you can then figure out, you know, if you have enough space, then do you want to do the O scale to have bigger trains? That way there might be easier to work with. Or do you want HO, the, the more common one, I guess I should say. Um, the only concern with any scale that you choose is certain trains and certain passenger cars work better 
with a better radius of track. Um, when you have a longer train, whether it's a GG1 or a longer locomotive or even those Amtrak passenger cars up on top, even the ones down there too, um, they take a wider radius to turn. And that's understandable because the longer the train or the longer the vessel, I guess we'll use, the longer the vessel, the wider the turn it needs to make. Think of big buses and big, you know, um, trucks, those 18 wheelers that we see driving down a highway. When those make those turns, they need a lot of space to turn over. They can't make a quick turn such as a smaller, like, punch buggy car like a Fiat can. Just so, like, a little switcher train or a little diesel, little, I guess, is in terms, this little diesel, right? Definitely, you know, it's a quarter smaller than the big one. So we can run on the 15-inch, the 18-inch radius of the track. Whereas the bigger trains, as mentioned, usually work and perform better on a 22-inch radius or bigger. Now, with these smaller scales, that means that you can make a nice turn, whether that be a semicircle or a full circle, in less of the space than it would take for a bigger scale. However, that being said, with a smaller scale come smaller screws. And so it's best to have the right equipment in order to make sure how to run a sufficient railway. You want to make sure that you are confident and you're able to work and know how the gears and wires and screws will work within those scales. And just like that, you're on the right track. I'll see you real soon when we come back. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the College Railroader. And make sure to keep a lookout for more top videos. Take care, folks.